Coming back, I got this done. I'm gonna show you this. Mm. I got this done last night or yesterday. Let's go. What's that say? It says, uh, I'm not free until my people are free. Mm. In Arabic. I like that. Yeah, my cousin Basil sword? drew it. It's, it's a sword. sword. It's supposed oh, to be a Damascus like steel sword. It's a little swollen. You can tell in the area is like puffed up. Yeah, it's dope. But it's supposed to be a Damascus steel sword. I like yeah. that. What's up, man? Love it, bro. Did it hurt? <laughs> it's right on that Honestly, bone, it didn't bro. hurt that much, nah. Like, this hurt the most down mm -hmm. here. But, like, overall, I've had more painful ones, I guess. Right. I've been wanting to get this done for a minute. My cousin had to redraw it, and mm -hmm. then I had to get it, he had to get it double checked to make sure the words that lined up and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you speak Arabic? I do speak Arabic. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't read or write. That's the thing. I never learned that. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, it's just that it's like, uh, it's, it was super intricate. Yeah. It's like a nice, very detailed process of like learning that, and I, I didn't learn it as a kid. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, <laughs> bro, I look at it and I'm like, I can't tell it. Like, I didn't know. So the, the tattoo artist messed up on, oh. but not really messed up, but like right here, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be connected. Mm. These two. I didn't know that. So these two not being connected. It's a whole nother word. Bro. It's a whole nother word. Yeah, I didn't know that. It changes it. So like, it changes the, the whole quote mm. to like, as a pot from instead of it being like a statement to mm. a ponder. That's very dope too. <laughs> <Isn't that? laughs> I didn't know that. I'm like, my cousin, he's looking at it because he looked at the picture and he's like, everything's good. He's like, wait, no, he messed up. And I was like, when he said that, I was like, oh, bro, come on. It's on my arm already. What are you yeah. up on? <laughs> Then he told me, I was like, he's like, it's not that bad, actually. He can just go and connect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All he's doing connect it to when it's when still good, though, man. Yeah, all you can't things, tell All either. things happen for the reason they need to happen, happen for us. Yeah, so facts. You never know. Then he's going to finish. He shaved here because he's going to do that and then he changed his mind. He's mm. going to finish the shark and the water stuff next to the jiu-jitsu That's guy. what I was going to ask. What was going to go next? Like that, I don't think I've ever seen that. You're That's dope right here. Yeah. Do tying his belt and then I got sharks on both sides. He's gonna do more mm. work in like more detail in the water and everything. And the one is a feral, shark breaching. Uh, what's the one up there? I one, remember this one. Yeah, it's Anubis, King Tut, like and then I got this one. It's dope. Yeah, I love it, man. Tim did some good work. I'm happy. I'm happy as hell. I got yeah, to get going, get in good, there, man. get with him. What? Um, I texted him like a week's notice. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I, I wanted to come, but I didn't think about the tattoo just because my cousin didn't finish it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I talked to Basil, and I was like, bro, what do you think the odds are you can finish it by this day? And he's like, done. <laughs> like, really? Sure. He's like, yeah. So we finished it in time, and then I had, um, you know, Gabby from Cafe Lamont? Yeah. His wife is apparently, like, she knows someone in her family is, like, uh, like really good with Arabic literature. Mm -hmm. And so, like, literally they looked at the first tattoo. Yeah. She didn't do it for a while because I feel like he didn't, he wasn't happy with it mm -hmm. and ended up being wrong anyway. Mm -hmm. The writing wasn't accurate to what the words were, so it changes slight things, right? 100%, yeah. Like, uh, literally, like, you can't really see the difference. You look at it, you can see it, but not, like, understand Hardcore, it. Hardcore, yeah. Hardcore people want to see this. Right? I mean, somebody, yeah, somebody yeah, who reads yeah. and read and writes it, they can, they can see a difference. So, this is the original one that... No. This is the original one. So, this still looks good, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, apparently, like, uh, vo the vo like vocabulary-wise, that accurate. Yeah. And then this is the... The redrawn up one. That's dope. Yeah. So well, you know he did art like that. Yeah, bro, he did. He did all my all my art Arabic. Seriously, that's he crazy. Did, he did bro. this one too, and then I had the same thing. Just put. And I think honestly, the the, the line work would have been better like this if it was mm -hmm. done by the same guy. This was done by a different guy. Gotcha, gotcha. But still, it reads right and everything. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Come here. What's your dog's name again? Nas. Nas. Nazir, but Nas. Oh my god. Sure. <laughs> hey, hey, sit. You don't do it this way since you just keep getting up, boy. All right, so we'll start the podcast just uh, to get people familiar with you. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, Basil Hafez here, um, good friend of mine, teammate. We've been training together since, what, 2015? 2015, maybe, 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 maybe earlier. Maybe early, like, yeah, probably yeah. earlier than that. But I've known Basil for a long time, watched his career. He's a professional MMA fighter. Uh, he's also a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Uh, for those who don't know Basil, who are you and what do you stand for? Are you talking? Yeah, Just yeah, yeah, it up. yeah, yeah. Uh, so my name is Basil Hafez. I'm a pro fighter. I feel like um, that's a that's a very <laughs> deep question. <laughs> that's a deep question. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and keep it a little short and just that's say fine. I fight for. Sorry. You good, man? I fight for, I feel like I fight for, um, 
my family, mm -hmm. my people, and uh, myself, man. And when you say your people, who, who are your people? Man, my, uh, my culture, uh, my cousins, my family, my friends. I love it. It's kind of like a, a general term, I feel like. like. I can say my people, and, and it's kind of like can, can cover a lot of things, but mm -hmm. for me it covers like, you know, my friends, my family, um, my immediate family, my like, loved ones that passed away, mm -hmm. you know, my people. Like the whole world, man. <laughs> the whole, <laughs> the whole, the whole world, world, bro. Being humanitarian with it. <laughs> the whole world. The whole world, bro. I like that. Um, uh, how's, how's things going? I know you, you recently moved to uh, Colorado. Yeah, you can keep off of it. You good? Does it move this way? Or? Yeah, it Oh, there we go. See? I know you moved to Colorado. Um, you're originally from Philadelphia. Can you tell people about uh, your experience with that and why'd you move out there? Um, I know it's for your MMA career, but I want you to tell the people like why you why you moved from Philadelphia to Colorado. Yeah, so uh, I moved from uh, Philadelphia, Colorado, mainly to focus on like getting with a good fight team and uh, just kind of like fully immersing myself with mm -hmm. the martial arts and fighting. Um, when I was out here, you know, I have connection to all my family and friends, and I grew up out here, so everybody knows out here, mm -hmm. and it was super good, like for everything. Uh, the only thing was we didn't have, really have a good MMA program at the gym we were training at at the time, and um, you know, it was great for jiu-jitsu, but for MMA I needed to have that like full immersion in striking and fighting and doing constant MMA workouts, MMA things every day mm -hmm. to really get me focused on that, not just doing you know no gi class, which correct, correct. really helped my jiu-jitsu my whole career. I'm a black, a first degree black belt mm -hmm. um, under Ricardo McLeese, but for me it was more about getting getting to become an overall good fighter not just a grappler so i felt like where i was how i was training and what i was doing out here wasn't going to get me far in my mma career at the time mm -hmm. and so i wanted to make that switch and that you know at the time i was working with uh at the time i still am with uh, iridium sports and they had introduced me to a uh, coach out in denver mm -hmm. and i liked I, I matched well with the team and so i said you know what screw it i'm just gonna move my whole life i mean i Packed my car up. That's a tough thing to do, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I packed my car up and I uh, just drove straight over there and uh, officially moved over there. And now I'm training with Elevation Fight Team and I'm loving it, man. It's been the best decision I ever made. Um, and I talked to a good friend of ours, Anton. Oh, yeah. Anton Brazil mm -hmm. about this a long time ago. And, and uh, you know, he's someone who I believe, you know, wholeheartedly is just as good as any light heavyweight in the UFC. Agreed. Um, Especially when you consider that he's a really dangerous grappler, which a lot of guys in that division mm -hmm. are not. Mm -hmm. um, but he told me the biggest thing that he felt like uh, that he didn't get to really devote a lot to, to devote a lot to and make the change to was was to change training camps and go somewhere, travel somewhere. So mm -hmm. he said that was, that was the one thing that he could do again, do all over again with his training was uh, to be able to travel somewhere. So that really uh, I soaked that in. That really stayed with me for a long time, and I realized like you know. I know what I have, what it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, I've trained with guys in the UFC and guys at the high levels, mm -hmm. and, I, and I've done really well with them. So for me, it was like, I really need to make that switch. And, and what he said resonated. So I felt like, you know what? Like, that that's the one thing that I haven't done. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Anton. Yeah, shout out to Anton. That's the one thing I haven't done. <laughs> that's what's up. I mean, I definitely understand because um, I do a lot of cross training myself. So I definitely understand where you're coming from. Um, for people who don't know, Basil just he he just had a fight for uh, Fury um, his fight fight league Fury fighting championships for uh, Fury, Fury fight Fury champion, uh, promotions and he just came off a, I think it was the second round knockout is that third round knockout third round knockout yeah. against uh, what was his name again Cut, uh, Evan Cuts Evan Cuts yeah. so awesome congratulations on your victory thank you bro um, you definitely look like you've been eating your you've been eating good <laughs> and stuff like that so yeah, I'm not um, a fight weight right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not. I was gonna ask. Um, uh, how is training out there? What's what's different in the training, and like, what have you been doing different that kind of like took you to the next level? Cause I can see I can see it in you. I can see it in your demeanor. I can see it in your the way you talk and present yourself. So, uh, and I definitely watch your Instagram, and you you've been training with um, like uh, all these UFC fighters as well. And I know you can hold your own. I, I've trained with you, so I already know what's up. Um, so if you can just elaborate on that. Um, yeah, definitely. So first of all, I appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel like I've, I've leveled up and I've grown a lot since being out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's 
just a lot more focused on like training. It's kind of like bringing it back to where it was when I first got into MMA and I first kind of was like immersing myself with it. Yep. Like doing AM sessions, doing PM sessions. Like I'm talking like, you know, three or four sessions a day at mm -hmm. points in camp. And really like honing in on what I need to do to be able to be a good fighter come fight night. Mm -hmm. um, and focusing on my conditioning. Man, a lot has changed, yeah. I don't really do much outside of my training. I feel like I devote fully mentally physically uh, all my energy everything i do is is focused on making it the training mm -hmm. recovering in between sessions and making it to the next session um as well as just you know being out there on my own working with new coaches i feel like i've reached a new point mentally mm -hmm. uh and like you know that i didn't have before when i was out here especially even earlier in my career mm -hmm. like uh the timing of me training out there and focusing on the things i'm focusing on is good in terms of like where it's really like i'm going mentally mm -hmm. to match that as well That's so cool. I feel like, you know, I'm just, that's all I'm doing. I'm just focusing on training. I'm eating right. I'm getting really good technical work in. I'm pushing myself probably as hard as I've pushed myself ever in my career with my strength conditioning. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them, Barwis. Uh, they've really been helping me out with leveling up. And I feel like, uh, you know, as well as, because as you get older, you get injuries. And yeah. uh, they're, you know, PT uh, based company. So they've helped me a lot too with like, managing through my injuries making sure i'm still like i'm showing up that day and if something hurts i'm, I'm still training every other part of the body Smart. i'm training other things that can can still help me level up that day so it's not a wasted day and uh that's the difference man just really you know purposeful training mm. uh prehab rehab making sure i'm always ready and recovered every single session mm. and uh you know training with the guys i'm training over at onyx too okay with kamara Usman, justin gaethje training with a lot of other high level ufc mm. fighters at elevation fight team my striking is leveled up with Justin Houghton over at Pound for Pound, doing my jiu-jitsu with Steve Wardinsky, who uh, is in the same lineage as Ricardo. Mm -hmm. and they came up a lot together. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm hitting it from all areas and I'm really like, really treating it like it's a full-time job. That's, that's, that was going to be one of my questions. Like, what did you do outside of uh, like fighting? But obviously you said your, your, your mental is there focused on the fighting aspect and recovery and stuff like that so i think that's super awesome i wish i was you right now so i got like this i got three kids you can't so be me just, I, just live broke <laughs> live broke and just hope so hey, that's that's all that's, that's it. but that's that's the mindset of a winner man Every, you know i i i commend you for that and uh, i respect you for that that's I'm living vicariously through you, so keep it up, keep doing your yeah, thing, bro. man. I live vicariously through Vice you, the versa. same way. We, we both we have family, our ways yo. that motivate each other. Big facts, man. man. We're family, so we already know how that goes. <laughs> oh, um, that was my other question. So Wearing place of peace gear, uh, yeah, training, pretty... that's what really helped me level up, bro. I'm, wearing, I'm <laughs> choking people out while I'm wearing place of peace. They don't know what's going on. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> they ain't ready for this. Yeah, y'all let us know, man. We're oh, peaceful man. for a, a, a reason, because we know what war is. We know the opposite side of peace, so... When we talk about peace, it's uh, we we know the other side. So, you know, what I mean, we're we're at peace when we're training. We're exactly. at peace when we're learning how to really, you know, be not peaceful. In reality, it's 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 a it's a crazy thing when you think about it. One hundred percent practicing killing each other and 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 doing damage, but it, that's our place of peace, man. One million percent. I appreciate you for understanding. I appreciate whoever 100%. has been whoever has been supporting me for understanding. Um, let's keep this thing growing because. I, I want to see the world at peace. You know what I'm saying? If I, you know, it starts with the individual, and then we grow from there. So. And in reality, I feel like if the major, if all everybody in the world had a place of peace, which is really like what's what the what's your place of peace? The place where you can improve, grow, and become a better person, right? For us, mm -hmm. it's martial arts. One million percent. But I feel like that could be it for a lot of people. And in reality, when if you get the whole world that everyone is training, mm -hmm. man, it'll be a lot more peace in reality. I, I because agree. when you train, you understand. Everybody's at war. Like you at war in the gym. You understand peace. A million percent. And you want peace in reality. You don't want violence. The only, it's only people that don't experience it every day. Who think it's something they, else. Yep. Yeah, they think it's just a you know, flutter in the wind. Yeah, yeah. My wife was talking about like the NBA players like always fighting and like like choking each other out. It's like you guys don't even know how to really fight. Like you don't you don't train fighting, so you don't understand that. You don't understand that real game about fighting. So you, you should just chill out and, you know, that's that's yeah. my two cents, man. No, but I agree. I feel like a lot of it's just like it's misplaced anger. But if you get a bunch of guys that all train, they all box. Then they it's understand. like 
like you get a whole, say you get the 76ers team and you put them all in a room, right? Mm -hmm. And you get them all training and you get them all training around each other. They're all going to know who the baddest dude in the room is. Exactly. They're not going to just go and try and test them, right? 100%. But in reality, like they're going to also have respect for each other because they be, they beating the crap out of each other exactly. on a daily basis. They're like, grinding that hard. Yep. So they have each other's back. I mean, they already do it in team sports, but I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of it isn't fighting based, obviously. So Correct. I feel like if more people trained, they understand the power of what training does and what it brings. It would be less ego because mm -hmm. you definitely don't can't have an ego in the training room. Yeah, ego's you, dead, man. Yeah, if you have ego, you ain't getting beat up hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting beat up and you're not learning, man. So uh, right, so continue man. continuously learning. That's the process. I'll leave you with two questions because I know you have to, to head out. But I'm sure, man. My man, 50 grand. Um, <laughs> what is the most challenging thing that you had to face uh, in your journey in the mixed martial arts career? Um, it could be now or whenever. When you started? Man, I'd say the biggest challenge, it has to be self-doubt. Mm. And it sounds kind of, some people may say that sounds corny, but in reality, that's like the biggest deterrent for anything. Mm -hmm. For any, any, no matter the field you're in, you're always going to have self-doubt. Yep. And that self-doubt fuels lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. It fuels an ego. Mm -hmm. It fuels a lot of things. And I feel like um, a lot of times I've had, a lot of problems with self-doubt even through camps even pre-fight mm -hmm. i've had fights where i had self-doubt even in the fight mm -hmm. and i didn't fight to my truest potential like i didn't go in there and just say f it yep. you know mm -hmm. and so that's also kept me from taking fights it's kept me from the times where i had i feel like the times i haven't had self-doubt is when i've been injured you know mm -hmm. i have fighted a little bit and yeah. i always find motivation mm -hmm. so it's like you know, sometimes when you're down and out, though, you have that problem with self-doubt. And then you, you, you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe you have what it takes. And you look at all the hard work, not like living in the moment and saying, what do I got to do at this moment? Take the next step. But you just look at the future and you say, I got all this I got to do to get to that point. Yeah. So it kind of deters you on a daily basis. In reality, like, man, you just need to believe in yourself. I just, been, I just need to, I, just, I feel like I've been believing in myself. I've been believing in myself more and more lately mm -hmm. and really like, just having confidence in that, not letting self doubt take over. Whenever I have self have self doubt start to creep in, mm -hmm. I just look at the, look at the positives yep. and just continue to try and convince myself, you know, that I'm better than all the negative things that I think. One hundred percent. I totally understand where you're coming from from a fight aspect, as well as like a, a starting a business and stuff like that. Um, it's really about not doubting yourself and just keep going, keep going. Like, wake up, do it again. Like, no matter if you win or lose, keep going, keep going. And you're eventually going to keep winning over and over because uh, that confidence in yourself does lead you to uh, the promised land. In my, in my opinion. 100%. No, I agree. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times, like, there's, like, maybe people don't have ways to, like, to put that mm -hmm. self-confidence and take away the self-doubt. One coach uh, that I worked with, taught me something that I feel like is kind of like stuck with me mm -hmm. is everything I feel like if you're really like a progressive person you're trying to grow you're always gonna be able to take and absorb something from every person Correct. you know whether mm -hmm. it's someone that you look up to or you don't look up to anymore you're gonna be able to take one positive trait or one thing they do well that's gotten them to that point mm -hmm. right and you can kind of mimic it a little bit one thing I started to do a lot more of, and people may think it's weird but it's legit legitimately yeah. looking yourself in the mirror every day like not just saying I look myself in the mirror, like literally, take, literally. yeah, take a, take a moment, look in front of a mirror, pause and look at yourself in the eyes mm -hmm. and then tell yourself the affirmations. Like, like I did it a lot, man. I will be, I will be world champion. Yeah. yeah I, I will, will be champion. Yeah. And new. We, like, we know it. You know, you know tell about like, not even just saying like I to myself, no, like I saying you, you looking in the mirror, looking in my eyes and saying you like talking to yourself mm -hmm. and you may feel weird. It's going to feel weird the first time that you even just stare at yourself in the mirror, like truly stare at yourself. Mm -hmm. But you just do it more and more, and like uh, I feel like eventually you start to believe the affirmations. And really, when you believe the affirmations, then you start to put the work in more. All the work has purpose, and at the end of the day, then you're like, okay, I I, I did all the work to place myself in this position. I believe that I am this position, and now I will be that. You know, and like it's that. like, yeah, just that has really helped me a lot, man. I like this. I heard something else where somebody said, ask yourself, why am I like the best fighter in the world. You, like, you, you have to question what you're gonna do. You have to say, why am I the best looking dude in this room? Or I forgot who said it, but it's like when you question the, your goal is like you you reach your goal. I, I, I just heard about it 
maybe like a week ago. So I, I apologize for not having like where I got it from exactly. No, I like but that. Yeah, it's like you wake up. What's like, your why? You know I what question I'm your why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do I do this? Why do I? Yeah. But uh, and they said do it towards your goal. So it was like, why do I have the biggest business called the Place of Peace in the entire world? You know what I'm saying? So why am I sitting next to the world champ? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna guess. happen. I guarantee it's gonna happen. I have no, I have no doubt in the world. I know who you are, and and I, I know you know who you are, and you're, you're developing yourself in a better way. Um, as I hope I am. You know, we all, we all try to get better and better every day. Uh, we're all not perfect, but we all, we are trying to strive to be perfect. So, Thanks. um, Thanks. Uh, appreciate you, man. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> last question. Um, until next time um, How would you like to be remembered In the world After you become world champion And you, you do all the things that you Looked yourself in the mirror And you said I've accomplished everything in the world You're like 90 years old 100 years old and you're like Shit I lived 100 years old Yeah bro <laughs> Oh it's popping bro let's go <laughs> Be on juice and everything at 100 I'll be, I'll be picking the world up Put it Big down Big <laughs> Like I'll, be I'll be 100 <laughs> driving 100 speed miles too. Right? That's funny, man. But how would you like to be remembered, man? Uh, how would I like to be remembered? Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I feel like I would want to be remembered as someone that made a difference. Mm. As someone that was a good person, like, like a positive person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like, you know, that, that sounds a little corny, but to no, me, like, corny, I don't know, I feel like everyone figures out their purpose at some point in life. Some mm -hmm. people don't ever figure out their purpose because they never do enough, you know. Soul searching. They, yeah, they don't do enough soul searching. They end up just doing whatever was presented to them. And they mm -hmm. just, but like for me, I feel like, I feel like my purpose is to try and lead, the, lead this earth a better place than when I came into it. I think you are, man. Keep it up. Yeah, I mean, so for me, like, if I can help other people, help families in some way, like uh, something I want to do more of that I used to do was uh, sell t-shirts to help raise money for families going through breast cancer and like mm -hmm. donate directly to families, yeah, no, yeah. no middleman. Um, and so that's something I want to do more of. Um, yeah, I mean, just make a difference. Like if I, if I can uh, help someone else achieve their goals or reach their like passion or understand what they what their true purpose is, then that's something uh, that's better than, mm -hmm. you know, better than nothing and so like whether it's that whether it's you know helping families going through stuff or helping people going through problems or troubles or it's uh you know one day i raise a family and i raise a, i raise kids to be able to you know help people and do good things on their own whatever it may be i feel like that's that, that's my purpose is to try and do something positive before i leave and, and have made a positive change in people's life so that like not just not for my purpose, but for to help people reach their purpose, you know? Because I feel like more people that reach their purpose in this world, it leads to a better world. It leads to, it leads to a more productive I agree. future, you know? I 100% agree. I think you're going down that path. You're, that's the true answer of a black belt, in my opinion, a true black belt. <clears throat> that was a great uh, answer. Um, from you beating that. me up on the mats, you have, you have helped me uh, bring my children up through like lessons that you might not even know about. I learn something from every, everybody. So I, I take the things that I learn and I try to apply them and give them to my kids to make sure that they have a, a better understanding of life and, and how to go through life, just trying to be the best version of themselves. So like I said, everything, every person I meet is a reflection and I want you to keep doing your best and uh, you will be world champion. You already are a world champion, okay. as am I. So you already know. Let's get That's it, bro. I appreciate man. you doing this podcast, man. Next appreciate time, you, my bro. brother. Appreciate oh, man. you, man. Always thank you, thank man. you, bro. Thank you. It's always good catching up with you and seeing you. Absolutely. Gotta man. come back and visit more. Oh yeah, he will, bro. <laughs> and um, just let the people know uh, what's your Instagram and how can they get in contact with you and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, you guys can reach me through Instagram. Uh, it's my first name underscore my middle name. So Basil underscore Badger. But uh, you know, you can catch me on there. I want to thank all my team. Thank uh, Place of Peace. Thank you, bro. Always provide me with dope gear. And, uh, uh, and keep doing what we're doing, for sure. Appreciate and uh, thank my gym, Elevation Fight Team, Pound for Pound Muay Thai, Kitharo, Jiu-Jitsu, my strength conditioning, Barwis. Man, I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for the future, bro. Yeah, I'm excited, too, us. man. What's uh, Actually, <laughs> what's the, what's next for you? So, if at, anything. at the moment, it's going to be just, you know, get back to Philly, get healthy again. Well, I mean, I'm healthy, but, like, you yeah. know, I feel pretty good. Just get back into fight shape, yeah. which I really didn't take miss a step, I feel like, since the fight. Mm -hmm. So, 
just get back and get ready. Uh, hopefully, a short notice UFC call. That's that's fingers crossed. Looking for that. If not, probably probably a title defense with Fury. That's what's up. So just um, get back to work, man. I'm nothing. Nothing's done yet. Not at all. Man. I feel just like I've done started. a good job with that. Humbling myself is like you know I had that knockout. Mm -hmm. I, I lived it in that moment, but uh, shit ain't shit yet. I haven't done anything yet. Right, so I like that. <laughs> yeah. Keep on the grind, bro. Oh yeah. All appreciate right, man. You, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Love you, bro. Love you too.